All right. Hey everybody, it's uh, time for a big storm to move in and it's looking nasty and it's coming in and I ran out of firewood. <laughs> that pile lasted me two years. And I kept saying, when I get down to my last load, I'm gonna order some more. Well, I forgot. So what am I doing? I'm out here trying to get out of the wind as usual. And I'm hacking up this counter that used to be in the shop that I just purchased. If you remember, if you watched those videos, you saw me hack up a counter in the office. Total confidence, bro. And it was out here at my junk pile right there. So it's really hard wood. It's like, it looks like pine. It's really light, but it's heavy. So it's not pine, it's something else that's heavier. And there's no stain or paint or anything on it that could hurt my chimney or do anything weird. So I'm out of here hacking it up, turning it into firewood. But what's funny about it is this. When I expanded in 2004 from just a tire shop to tires and automotive, I put my shop three doors down from the location I'm in now. If you look at this picture here, this right here is my old shop. Or let's say this is the shop I moved into when I was expanding. And I put me right next door, well, three doors down from this guy right here. And um, he felt threatened because he put an ad on the radio. And it went something like this. At so-and-so auto, we're highly educated. AAA certified, master techs. We're not just some tire guy offering minor repair. And he was fully burning me. Now, people came to my shop because they heard that commercial. And they go, do you hear what he's saying about you? So these are people that had known me already for about 20 years. And this guy was kind of new. He'd been there about two, three years. And um, it actually brought me more business. And people were like, you ought to say something. You should complain. Because I was advertising on the same radio station. But I'm not, I'm just not a revenge guy. My life and my time and my emotions and my, the capacity in my mind and heart is not worth storing up revenge for people. Have I been perfect about it my whole life? No, of course not. Nobody has. But I have learned as I get older, it's just a waste of time. Because bitterness and anger only hurt the container. So I... I, never, I just didn't care. I'm like, that's funny. I thought it was funny. I go, this is so funny. This guy, he feels threatened by me. So over the years, we never had words, never had anything bad happen. But that commercial ran for, let's see, 04 to 2012, eight years. And then I sold this shop right here. And I went to Lucerne, started another shop, was there four years. Then I bought this one back, came back up here, not the property, just the business. And then, of course, this guy went out of business. And I was able to get the building. And what's funny is I'm burning his desk and I'm burning his counter to heat my house now. So I just, it's not, again, I'm not extracting joy from the circumstance. It's funny to me. And there have been other times where things have happened in my life that I felt like kind of God just took care of it because I let it go. There was one time we moved into a new house. We lost our dream home with a huge 45 foot pool and five acres and a dirt bike track. We lost it in 2010. We struggled to survive from 20, 2008 on. We had an adjustable rate. It went up. Our payment went to 4,500 bucks. We lost the place. So we bought this place way out in the middle of nowhere at the end of this dirt road. And there was one other house near us. And this house had been vacant since 2007. And the neighbor had been there the whole time. So he, he saw it sit there for three years. So we moved in. And all of a sudden, he just had this weird fascination with us. He would come walk around our property. Now, about an acre was fenced, so he couldn't really get to our house. But he would walk around our property just looking at our house, and our dogs would go nuts. And then he started doing it on his horse. And my wife was like, she would call me at work, Babe, this guy's walking around our property on his horse. Staring in the windows. And I'm like, babe, I was only a couple miles away at the new shop at the time. I'm like, look, if he does anything weirder than that, you just call me. I'll be there in a hot take. But 
I said, look, we're new. He's been staring at this empty house for three years. So he's obsessed a little bit. And there's something new here. And one day we won't be new and it'll be over with. So just deal with it. And he did it for weeks. And one day the dude was on his horse. And he's walking around our house. And my wife's like, babe, he's doing it again. This time I was home. I go, just don't go near the windows. Because he wants us to come outside. And we had had plenty of talks with him. We would go out and talk to him. But this time, it was Saturday. I didn't want to come out. I just wanted to relax. So we stayed in the house. And then all of a sudden, a couple hours later, I was out back. And I noticed there was an ambulance between my house and his house. So I walk over there. And they're loading the dude up. My neighbor. And I'm asking the guys, hey, what happened here? I knew some of the guys because my kid was part of the EMS uh, people of this valley. So... They said, oh, yeah, Gino, uh, the dude got bucked off his horse, and he opened fractured his humerus, and his bone's sticking out. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is horrible, right? But it's like it kind of solved the problem. Again, not extracting joy, not revenge, just that's kind of funny. So he heals up. It takes him like a year to heal up. He had a couple surgeries. He sold his horses. And then he bought a quad, a big four-wheel drive quad. Guess what he starts doing? He starts driving around our property like a year later. And my wife's calling me at work. He's on his quad now, and our dogs are going nuts, chasing him around the fence. And I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll deal with it. Let's just let it go. He just got the quad. Let's give it, you know, a couple weeks, see what happens. So a couple weeks go by. All of a sudden, he's not riding around for a while. And then I see him. And I'm like, hey, man, how's it going? Good. He's like, hey, my quad got stolen <laughs> in the middle of the night. So these are just three funny things that I can look back on, and they just, the circumstances worked themselves out. I had nothing to do with any of these things, with any of these bad things happening, because very easily it could be me, and I have had bad things happen, and I don't attach them to other people. They've all been my responsibility. So I'm going to use this wood to heat my house, and I've also used it to make a parts counter at our shop, and I'm going to put a deck on this trailer right here. So thanks, Dan. But it's just funny. And here I am heating my house with a guy that mocked me for eight years uh, with his desk. All right. I pretty much got this thing all swept out. I vacuumed out all the crevices and uh, cleaned up. There was loose oil on the metal part back here. I cleaned that all up. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and just paint the bottom of this thing. And the last container I had had a bunch of diesel stains and smells and I used this primer on it you just use it as a sealer I had not tinted it like a light gray kind of just to match that way it's not white and uh, so I'll just show you how this thing comes out and uh, even though there's still like that's not fresh but it is in this in the wood and normally paint wouldn't cover something like that and then this is water damage from water leaking in the way this thing was positioned before. But we didn't get any water in and it rained last night. So I only have like an hour of light left and I've been working on this thing for the last few hours. So let's get it painted. I'll just update you and show you the finished product. What's up bro? Man, what a beautiful night out here. All right, so it's been about an hour. I got the first coat down all the way to the back. It looks blue, but it's actually gray. Uh, it looks blue on the camera, but to my naked eye, it does. it's gray. So I'm going to leave these doors open for a couple hours, and then before I go to bed, I'll come out here and shut them. Hopefully, no bunnies or anything jump in there. So we'll pick up where we left off tomorrow. All right, so my plan was to finish painting the inside of the bin floor today. Over there, but it rained this morning and last night, and it's freezing cold, so... I've only got two days left to get the floor painted and get my storage unit moved over here before I go back to work and my crazy schedule. So I'm going to bring this heater out there and I'm going to heat the place and then I'm going to finish painting it today. out 
So what I'm doing is two coats of the primer, and then I'm going to do a final coat of some heavy duty deck and cement paint um, later today. And it'll all dry, and then tomorrow I can move all the storage stuff in here from our storage unit and bring start bringing stuff over from our garage. And I checked online and did a little research. These lights right here seem to be, they're like number two on the list of the best shop or barn solar lights. And I ordered two. So I'm gonna have two come here and I'm gonna put four total. I'll put like one here and one here to light up this whole side. And then one there and one there to light up that side. And then the, of course the panels go on the roof. So we'll do that as well soon. But let's get to painting. So it's one of those things where like maybe I don't come in and just pump it up and I dude, you know how it is, like second coat's done. My original intention was just to do primer, but after it dried, it just felt really, really chalky and very uh pasty, you know, dry, pasty, like not smooth. So I think I do want to paint it. So I'm gonna let this thing dry. It's freezing cold. I don't know if it's going to be dry enough to paint tomorrow. That would be a bummer and then it would never dry. So we're going to play it by ear. All right, you guys, it's day four. I prepped on day one. Um, I primed on day two. I primed on day three. And yesterday, day three, I went and got the paint. I got a heavy duty garage floor, concrete, wood, deck, paint, semi-gloss, same color. But here's the problem I'm dealing with. If you listen to when I lift my feet, it's not leaving a mark. And when you touch it, it, it feels dry. But I'm just worried that because it's so cold and there's so much moisture in the air that it's really not all the way dry. If I paint over, it's gonna take forever to dry. My plan to get this container done and my storage unit moved during my Christmas break is out the window. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this thing dry for a week and next weekend I'll paint it Saturday and I'll see what it looks like Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, what have you. And if it's still not to where I want it, it'll be another week. And so we'll check back then. So for now I'm just gonna, I'm gonna fix these doors to be partly open so that the paint does breathe, but the project is postponed. I'll check back in a week. All right, you guys, it's been a week later. This thing's been drying for over a week, and the weather hasn't been great. We've had storms and stuff, but I had the heater in here heating it a bunch, and uh, I know it's dry, and my feet still make this noise. That sticky noise. I'm just guessing that that's just the way, it's just grippy, I guess. So this is two coats of this kilt stuff, and this stuff, Kilts it, let me tell you. So I'm moving some stuff in here right now, uh, just to get out of my garage, and then this weekend, I'm gonna paint it because I was gonna paint it today, but they're predicting like a major storm, and it's already up in the mountains up here, and they're saying hurricane force winds, and the last storm we had, we had 70 mile an hour gusts, and if you look at this line right here, in the concrete, my brand new concrete here, all the way out, 
to here, what that was, was that trailer. The wind pushed that thing all the way here on its jack, on its jack, and it actually caught the hose like this, and then it stretched the hose so tight that it kept it from going down the hill. So I had to tuck it back there for now, but it looks like a storm's coming. Next time, this weekend on Saturday, I should be able to paint it. All right, so I'm about 80% of the way done. I absolutely love the sheen off of that paint. See the difference? This is primer down here. I use that Valspar brand on all the painting I did in the new shop and our new home in 2019 and it's coming out great so we'll we'll catch you outside when it's over here take another we'll get a final look at it all right that floor is looking killer and what i got going on is it's like in the 40s right now high 40s so the container was 80 degrees when i went in there because that sun up there and this brown paint is heating it but with the doors open and painting it it dropped down to like uh, 55 inside so what I got going on right now is I have the door open here and I'm just shooting hot air in there. I'm going to shoot it in there for a long time and I have this back door just venting it. It's just cracked open and I'm hoping that just kind of gets a jump on the drying because as that sun sets it's going to get in the 30s tonight and get really cold and I want this to dry. Alright, it's been... Uh, couple hours since I painted it. Let's get these doors open. And uh, wow, this just looks, it looks amazing in here. I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but just do a before and after. Here's a before picture, and then here's an after picture. And what this means is I can just start putting stuff in here as early as this weekend. As early as tomorrow, really. I got it up to 80 degrees in here with the heater. I'm going to lock it down for the night, and then tomorrow, start moving stuff in. Hey, you're on my foot. <laughs> Thanks for that. Can you get off my foot, please? Thank you. <laughs> January 19th, 11 a.m. with a nod. Round two or round three. Get to the bottom of that too. Of the uh, Monster Energy Supercross Series is starting up this weekend in San Diego and a new stadium.
it's like the 20th of January and you see what I got done in here. Um, I turned the five tier shelves into six tier shelves. So one, two, three, four, five of these racks will take up half of this. So I need to get a total of 10 or 11 to get in here. We do the beach a lot in the summer. So we're gonna put our beach stuff on this side. Of course, we do a lot of camping. We're gonna put our camping stuff on this side. And then these shelves will go all the way down to the end. And then I'm gonna put a patio furniture and ladders and stuff back in here. So I'm gonna call it quits for knots freezing cold. My GoPro battery's almost dead. And the weather's looking ominous. What are you doing? What are you doing? Are you listening for those murderous delivery drivers? Oh, you hear something. Well, go get them. Yeah, the weather's looking nice and beautiful. All right, so this is what my garage looks like. Remember, there was a bunch of stuff in that corner, and I had a big old rack between the doors there full of camping stuff. This is still stuff I got to go through, and then this whole back wall was just Costco racks full of stuff. That's all moved. I'm going to clean this whole thing out of here and turn this into my little, uh, it's already kind of my little man cave. You know, I got my TV up there and my tools and stuff here. I'm going to turn this side into an area where I can work on stuff. I can weld in here, grind in here, do stuff, and uh, I won't have all that stuff in the way. And one day, one day, I'd love to get another side-by-side. -side. That's what it looks like for now. I'm going to clean this sucker up and update you. About a week later, and I've just been working back in the shed again here, the container. And this is half of it here. The other half is behind me. This is, like I had said before, my beach stuff. We do a lot of beach activities, so you pull the car in here, load your beach stuff, you're out. And then more beach stuff, and then I'm going to have my little uh, work counter here, and just got my goodies up on the walls there. And then here's all those racks that I put together. Uh, five tiers turned to six tiers, and they came out nice. There's still a ton of empty space here for more stuff. Now remember, my storage unit still has to come here, and there's only a couple more things in my garage that need to come here. So I still have this whole wall here for storage container stuff if needed. This is the seasonal stuff back here. The uh, furniture for the pool, swamp cooler for the garage, and then my camping stuff right here. So you pull in and get your beach stuff, pull in and get your camping stuff, and you're out. And then they go back in here. Eventually, I plan to park the toy hauler about 10 feet off of this right here, nose forward. And um, I would love to do some kind of RV awning, you know, over this thing, you know, that kind of ties in with this and comes over high enough. But uh, that's where we're at, you guys. I'll keep updating you till we get this uh, container video done. All right, so I've got these lights in here uh, just temporarily. I charged the solar panel for a day and I hooked these lights up. And I left them on for two hours and they go off automatically. You can set them for two, four or six hours or auto and they have a dimmer switch. They're really cool. So you see they really light up this end here. I've just decided to put the panel right down the middle on the roof. I'm going to put it on one of the sloped parts of the steel so water can't puddle there. I'm going to use rubber grommets. I'm going to drill holes and then these are just held up by magnets. These little magnet hooks you get from Amazon right here. And I'm going to put the solar panel in the middle, run the wires in, make it all nice and tight up on the roof. And I'll have two lights here. And then I'll do the same thing down here. So what that'll do is give me light at both ends. And um, the solar panels will be visible, but they'll be on the roof. There'll be one down there, one here. It'll just kind of look uniform. So here we go. So I'm going to put this Teflon washer underneath to uh, to waterproof it.
was like, where's Daddy? It's the moment of truth. It's not big enough. So we have the option to cut this wire and then reconnect it. I don't have any bigger drill bits. That's the biggest one you have? Mm -hmm. Just toss them up here. They went over the other side. They went over the other side. Okay. Hey buddy, buddy, they went over the other side again. What? You tossed them over the other side again. Yeah, I heard them hit the ground over there. There, perfect. Hey, wait, wait. They didn't go over, just so you know. I went ahead and spliced the wires, ran them through the hole in the roof. It's really cool because they've been on without any solar panels hooked to them, just the internal battery inside each fixture. And as soon as I plugged in the solar panel, they got super bright. So this thing works really good. Um, if you look, I don't know if you can see that blue light. Let's see. See that blue light blinking? That's showing me it's charged, it's down to level two. And then here's a remote. You come in, we're just gonna go ahead and turn them off, okay? They each go off individually. You come in and you hit on, and then what happens is a little blue LED comes on on both of them. So then you know they're on, and you can see they're charging. There, now you can see it charging. So they're, they're at level two and they're still charging. And then if you hit, the, you can hit the two hour, four hour, six hour, we hit two, and they come on. And then you can brighten them, and you can, I'm dimming that one there and brightening it. Making it as bright as it'll go, making that as bright as it'll go. And look at that, woo! Operating off the sun, baby. Free electricity inside your house. Of course, that's where we're going. And we're gonna do two more down there, like I said. What do you think? I like it. Look at that. Now we can work in here at night. So then what you do is you put a little magnet like I have on this. You put a little adhesive magnet on this thing and you just stick it on the wall wherever you want it. Maybe where, you know, maybe you stick it on the wall like right when you come in, you know, right here. And then you can just turn on your lights and put the thing back on the wall. All right, so that's it for that project. I'm going to get more of these little magnet holders. Let me show you. I'm gonna get more of these, those little magnet holders. They hold like, like a lot, like a couple pounds or like five pounds. Um, I use them at work all the time. Uh, to hang clipboards and stuff. That way I don't have to put any adhesive on the roof and then I'll, I'll zip tie all these wires up nice and neat and I'll run them on hangers back to that hole up there. So right now I'm just gonna patch that hole and then she'll be done. I did the wood before you got home. Uh, I noticed my truck was in a different spot. Let's go check it out. Yeah. Yeah, you moved it. Oh, you put it in the wrong spot. Uh, well. You put it in this spot, and I wanted it in this spot. Just kidding. Man, <laughs> hey, this is my three and a half year old blind Anatolian Shepherd. His name's Juno. Did you know that Juno? was named after the town Juno in Alaska because we were supposed to pick him up, but we had a vacation coming and the people that owned him as a puppy said they would hold him 
till we got back from vacation, which is like another two weeks. And that video of Alaska is on this page. And here's the link right here if you guys want to check it out. Cool stuff up in Alaska. See ya. Like and subscribe.